Uh, so before we get this video started, we're gonna do what? The whistling diesel test? If you guys watched this video before, he broke an R32 camshaft. So let's see. This is an OEM Honda. TSX camshaft. Acura TSX camshaft. So let's see how well it holds up. Damn, baby. I guess Honda makes a better cam than Nissan. One more time, one more time. Oh, I guess not. <laughs> Good morning. In today's video, we're gonna show you how we mount our viscous. A little bit of change of plans. My brother didn't end up going with the Diamond Fab viscous mounts because he didn't wanna cut too much out of his tunnel to tuck the viscous up, if that makes sense. Slow progress here. Waiting on parts, we take two steps in, 10 steps back. That's why this process has been taking so much longer than we wanted. The biggest hurdle that we ran into was the viscous mount because he didn't wanna cut he didn't want to like cut too much of his tunnel. There's still some cutting involved. It was just more so he didn't want to ruin basically the chassis, even though he case swapped in all wheel drive there. He's going to mount it how basically I mounted my all wheel drive setup. Keep in mind here, we had drive shafts from a previous car that was ready EG hatch. Usually how this process goes when you're doing it, you usually mount your viscous wherever you want it. And then you get your drive shaft measurements, send them out to DSS or whoever makes your drive shaft. And then boom, you got it all set. In today's scenario, we already have drive shafts. So technically the viscous is kind of set to where it's going to sit right now. So I'll show you what we're working with. Show me what you're working with. I'll show, I'll show them what you're working with. So we have a DSS aluminum drive shaft. j bolted it up. You want to kind of explain what we're about to do here? So these drive shafts are already pre-made, like he said. So we kind of got to mount the viscous where the drive shafts allow them to lay, if that makes sense. And the front has a yoke where it actually expands. The rear doesn't. So I'm basically just mocking this up putting it up against the chassis and seeing where this is actually gonna sit with these channels. And we have to actually notch out the rear portion of the channel for this piece here to actually sit. So these can sit flush. So I got them marked out. I gotta just basically notch them out. Now on any car has to be notched out. Yeah, with this setup here, I haven't seen a viscous mount yet that doesn't have this style. They're pretty much all the same. Um, so you gotta basically notch them all out. So we, we went with uh, Trust Fab sells these billet viscous mounts because remember I told you guys the other Diamond Fab ones tuck the viscous up. This is what we're using now. j -Rock pressed these on this morning. The bottom lower section, these sections you can get from like FCS or whatever company makes them. And this piece obviously comes from Drive Shaft Shop. It comes as a kit with this. Basically you have your viscous, DSS provides this and the whole drive shaft. Trust Fab here for the viscous mounts. You get these from FCS, these brackets, or I think a few other companies make them. Everything else is provided from Drive Shaft Shop. And keep in mind, how long does that, how long does that process take? What, as far as mounting it? No, as far as getting a drive shaft. Oh, no. That's why we got the, we found one and we, we got this yeah, one. Yeah, it so. took me, honestly, to be honest, it took me about eight months to a year to get my drive shafts. I custom made them. There wasn't no one out there selling a EG hatch specific drive shaft, which initially for any companies watching this, you guys, some of the companies need to get their shit together too, because no, not everyone sells one thing. Speaking about like DSS, right? If they offered a drive shaft, one drive shaft that actually fit all cars, like you can make one for an EG hatch with a waggle, right? And just mount the viscous wherever it's set to pretty much. That makes sense, right? The same way we're doing right now like if, if dss made pre-made to the proper length and then whoever's installing it just mount the viscous where it needs to be but drive shaft shop wants you to mount your viscous and then measure and then they have to be custom made which stalls everything by a lot like yeah if they can be like hey look you need to buy this this with this to make this work it'll make life so much easier yeah. you know and sell one one drive shaft that everyone can use instead of, hey, look, I use this, I use a Freelander, I use this. Like this drive shaft works with a Wago or this drive shaft works with a Freelander, whatever the case you guys may be using. But someone should offer one thing for everything instead of going to 10 different places to get all these parts, which is honestly one of the biggest hurdles that we've had here. And, and the other thing is, is when you buy these mounts here, they come with, if you guys know what rib nuts are, it's basically just a metal insert that basically gets crushed into whatever you're trying to install it. This stuff is, is paper thin under here, right? 
So they expect you to mount this heavy viscous, which is gonna be under a load when you're beating on the car, rib nutted to this channel. We don't do that here. We actually make these plates, um, which we're gonna weld and then it's gonna basically strengthen this whole channel up. I would never trust a rib nut in that thin metal at all. So that's you wanna show them kind of what you did, what we did on uh, the street car? Basically yeah. the same setup. So in today's video, we're basically gonna walk you how to mount your viscous properly. You know, you just don't wanna rib nut it up to that channel. I don't think there's any YouTube videos either for all wheel drive installs, not that I've seen. But basically you can see here, uh, we cleaned it up and then we have these plates right here. It's just eighth inch steel. Um, for extra strength, we weld it to the channels here and then we mount it to that plate. So how do you get, you obviously have to tap this. Oh, uh, it's just drilled with a nut, a 14 mil nut welded. So you could basically still bolt it up, but this is so much stronger. That looks super strong to be honest, cause this, this channel right here, you can bend it with a pair of pliers. Yeah. But pretty much this is the goal with my brother's car is to get his channel looking like this. We're gonna mount his viscous the same way. I have like the like OEM style ones that you can find online. This was built so long ago. On my old, other old drive car, I have literally the same exact setup that he has. You know what would be nice too is if uh, DSS made like a drive shaft with a disconnect pin, like a quick. A lot of people tune these cars front wheel drive. Correct. You know? And I take the drive shaft off and like look at all the hoops that I have here just for safety, you know, just in case something breaks. But like, look at the nightmare we have to go through. I have to take off the hoops, right? And this is from actually disconnecting the drive shaft and rolling the car on the dyno. They should make a viscous with a pin in it, <laughs> right? Hopefully a company's watching this that can like hear us out. If they made one drive shaft, I'm pretty sure there's companies out there that make it. There's not only DSS, I know there's S1, there's a whole bunch of other companies. Hopefully some company can make everything you can buy all in one. That we don't really have to go through the hassle. That's reliable. That's the key factor here is to make it reliable. I know shit breaks. Half of these parts don't even work with each other. Like I don't want to blast any companies on video. We have to customize a lot of this stuff to make it work on this car. And, and how many people are in their garage wanting to build an all-wheel drive? So nobody wants to bring their car to a company. Like these guys probably want to do it themselves. And then when you get parts like these, it's the most frustrating thing ever and probably discourage people from actually doing it themselves, which sucks. It does, because like, I know some of you guys don't have half, like some of the tools that we have here. Doing this in a garage at home, I couldn't imagine doing this, especially on the floor with maybe no lift. Then you gotta take parts to go get machined, which is just honestly, all wheel drive is just a big headache until you get it right. And it's just so expensive. It's so much labor and test. I'm not discouraging you guys not to build an all wheel drive car. It's just so much work behind it. If these companies got their shit together, it would make life so much easier. But in today's video, we're gonna show you guys basically how to mount your viscous correctly. That's what this video is about. But this is the last part to make it all wheel drive. So now we're gonna show you why we cut the tunnel to begin with. Derek is putting the viscous up and then I'll try to get a good view for you guys. Pretty much, here's a good view right here. All right, I don't know if you guys can see that. You see how that sits up in there? You see why we had to cut it? And then the other- The front we don't have to cut. The front, cause the front's a little bit wider. It's got clearance. It's got a lot of clearance. So the other mounting brackets that uh, they kind of had to like weld up in here into this channel, which some of, the, some of the channel is not flat. That's why we didn't go with that. But it was just more labor intensive to do that. But then my brother didn't want to bang his chassis up too much underneath of here. It's all the same stuff because he cut into the chassis now. You know what, J-Rock? This car is now totaled. It is. It's totaled. He cut, he cut into the chassis. Yeah. At that point, he could have just did whatever he wanted at that point. I mean, if what does it go? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> like we already knew what this setup was. The other side, the other setup looked nice, but it's just. So this is pretty much how the viscous is gonna sit. And Jack's gonna weld the plates basically, one plate here, one plate here, and then the other side. Did you, you wanna tell them what size those plates are just in case someone wants to get them? Those plates are eighth inch. 
It's an eighth inch plate bent at a 90 degrees. Um, this is five inches by three by one. Super easy. Repeat that one more time for them just in case they missed it. It's eighth inch thick steel, just mild steel. It's five inches long, three inches wide, bent to um, one inch. It's just 90 degrees here. So three, one, five. Eighth inch. And we got New England Motors edition. <laughs> nobody else does it. <laughs> so we are going to weld all these plates up here, get them welded in today, and then mount this up for good. Well, we got to take it back down because he has to wrap the liner. The fun of building a car is always put it together, take it apart, put it together, take it apart. Uh, how many viscous bearing mounts have we put on this thing already? Four. Yeah, yeah four different <laughs> ones. We're going to use what we know works. Look at the drive shaft. This is exactly how it's going to sit. Pretty much the same thing as my car. It's going to be pretty much all wheel drive after we do this because we have the other drive shaft right here we're going to put up. Can we, well, just, can we just get like um, some billet plugs made that we just throw in the trans? And then just make it rear wheel drive? <laughs> That'd be crazy, right? Just take yeah. the viscous right out and have it 100% in the rear. I think it would be like the burnout master. I don't like rear wheel drive Hondas, just hasn't been I'm a thing. I don't burnout, so like if I had this car, I'd just plug the front axles and just keep it rear wheel drive. I don't even, is that, oh, that, that, machine, that would be a thing. Oh, you're talking about plug the axles in the front. Take the viscous so it's not like whatever the bias, 80, 20, whatever, just straight shaft, pause, and it'd be rear wheel drive. We should try that on. We should. Um, we, that's actually. We could get, I wonder how that would work, though. You know what we could actually do? It'd be slow, because wouldn't it be 60% to the rear? Well, that's what I'm saying with the viscous. Yeah, yeah, take the viscous out. But you could take the cups of an axle, pop them in, because it's still got the C clips where it would hold in, and then the outer cups just bolt it like a normal axle, but it wouldn't have the actual shaft. I'm sure, can you build that um, with thicker fluid? Yeah, you can put 100, 100, 100 weight in it. I wonder if we can do like that. We should try that on a car. <laughs> we just do friggin' drift car. Someone, drift watching this, someone, someone watching this video got a beater or a drive car, gonna try that next. All right, so we are gonna run to Home Depot. We gotta get a few cutoff wheels and like a uh, wire wheel. We're gonna try our wire wheel. The problem is, is all this is undercoated, and in order to install those plates, you need to strip all the undercoating. It needs to be very clean for a proper weld and I'm hoping a wire wheel won't overheat the undercoating and just kind of make it fling around so yeah so basically what Jarek's saying you just need to clean off all this undercoating so it doesn't burn when you weld and get just so you can get a really really clean weld we don't care how it's gonna look like right after we're done because we're gonna undercoat the whole entire car so everything will be nice and clean for welding brand new you're gonna need to basically sand all that down to like bare metal so you can get a really good weld time for the fun part going to the store yeah <laughs> Uh, we need some recommendations from you guys on YouTube. Can Not you a recommendation? No, no, no. Can Don't you build an all-wheel drive car? Build an all-motor car. Ask them what you need help with. Cause someone out there has done this. Yeah. Can you tell them our kind of like it's not a it's a problem, but kind of a problem? Stripping undercoating. What's the best way? I know someone has done it. What's the best way to try to strip undercoat from underneath the car? You see, like we hit it with the wire wheel, but it kind of just cakes up. Where's where's your wire wheel at? What's up here? So the wire wheel kind of like cakes up the undercoat on here. So it just basically moves it from one spot to another. I want you guys, if you guys could drop in the comments, someone, if someone has done this, what's like the easiest way to get this off? Someone help J-Rock out. What's the best thing to do? I don't want somebody to tell me. I want somebody to come show me. <laughs> <laughs> we've tried, we've tried those sanding discs like that are on like the cutoff wheel, but that didn't work. It just smudges it everywhere. I haven't seen anything Maybe we have to spray some type of compound or something on there to get it clean. But this is basically what it does. It smudges it up. Someone help my boy out. I'm just over all the driver. Bro, you cut a hole in my car? You Yo, you cut a hole in my car? Yeah. And my floor is that dirty? Okay. 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 You wanna help me wipe this? Yo. This is your car. Yo, you're gonna this. make this process a lot longer because you're gonna start cleaning oh right God. now while we're working. Yo, can you just back away? Hey, you got me? Let me just clean up real quick. You got me? You know it's not too late to go on motor, right? That's some, <laughs> that's some nasty stuff, bro. Yo, did they, bring, did they bring it back to your painting days? When you should paint houses? You know, this kind of makes me wish I was still painting. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. 
Yo, dude, come over here and do this shit, bro. I ain't gonna lie, that scraper's actually working really, really good. So, those of you guys at home that are actually doing this, start with this. You're doing pretty good. I might give you a raise today. <laughs> 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 yeah, Yo, you wanna step on that right now? <laughs> that shit ain't coming off, bro. Let me make sure that shit's really good. Oh my god, that shit ain't coming off. Nah, it ain't coming off. Yo, does he still owe your parents in? Yeah. yeah, dude. Oh, YouTube didn't see what you guys did, though. No, you might dude. have to throw in that clip. So, I blame this on the guy that made the stencils. These were brand new at one point. I put a glizzy stamp on them. Actually, J Rock did. Like we a, did. It was a team effort. I'm gonna see if I can drop the clip in there. It's gonna be the long way though. Pause. So I don't know if you guys seen my story. My brother came into work with brand new Tim's on, right? We don't put brand new sneakers on here. We've got a glizzy stencil. We're gonna try to spray paint it on his Tim's. So let's see how this goes. He's a little too clean. Too, too clean. Yo, man. Yeah. Yo, can you come on me? Are you on the driver front? Yeah. Uh, it's probably easier for me to do the passenger front. Passenger yeah. All right. All right. Um, just hold it tight. I still been wearing them to work though. <laughs> Good thing is it lasts forever because they're undercoated now. <laughs> Yo, Jack, remember you told me this is the part that YouTube doesn't see? This is the nitty gritty work. It's like the worst. And then the guys complain like, oh, well, we don't record about everything that we're doing. This is the stuff you this guys want to see? You want to see this boring stuff? Drag, what you doing next? I'll just mark out where the plate is going to actually sit. And then I can just focus on where I need to clean up. Instead of cleaning off the whole thing? Yeah. So, you guys see that's pretty much where the plates are going to be sitting. Because we're going to strengthen that whole area right there. And that's basically where they're gonna get welded on. What Jarek is doing now is basically we're gonna have to clean off that surface to bare metal so he has a good surface to weld on. We'll be able to mount this viscous complete and then we gotta take everything back down and undercoat, clean it all up, make it look really nice. We've been at this all day long. So pretty much all day with a shop to mount this viscous the right way. Fun, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> that's, that's actual size. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Always that gang. Always, always that gang. Gang gang. Busy gang. Yo, Jared, what a mess, bro. This isn't two sided uh, paper. No, it's not two sided. It's stuck to the floor. This thing is a crazy mess. Right, so this is kind of the finished product you've seen Jarek left like the original primer of the car, so that way when the plate goes over it, we'll undercoat around this. So you want to kind of put the plate in there, see how that sits up in there? Yeah. So we have our New England viscous. Uh, supports I'm just going to sit up in there, and then as you can see, it's all clean metal around there. It's got to clean up the plate, and then I could just basically weld around there. But I got to mock up the plate to figure out where the holes need to be. It's like a weld nuts on the back side, and then this will just bolt in. Pretty much is how it's going to sit. We're going to put the plates in here, weld around here, and 
and then just like that, that's how that sits. This is a little bit longer. Yeah, I'm gonna mark it out and grab my marker. Let me get on this side. Right now he's just making his marking so he knows where to cut because the channel is smaller up here and then it gets bigger back there that's why we got five inch plates that way you can cut them down to what you need to you see this channel is a lot smaller than obviously the one in the back it gets bigger as it goes back you guys see that time to weld no, nah, I'm gonna cut the plates. What you doing now, j -Rock? I'm using a hole punch to mark where the holes need to be drilled for the nuts. Yeah, you smart. Work smarter, not harder. Quick, what'd you use to cut the what kind of disc did you use to cut? Just a four inch cutoff, four and a half inch cutoff wheel. And then what'd you use to clean? A uh, flap disc. Dope. So basically clean the surface to weld. Yep. That way everything is clean and get a nice clean weld. You welding? No. Can you get one weld? No, no, no. Or get a tack weld. If it was my car, maybe. Can but you pull out the weld. Yeah. No, they're gonna make I'm gonna make more work for you. <laughs> Check out that fitment though, huh? That fitment is on point. We still have to drill and weld the nuts on before we even weld, but that's, we just kind of wanted to get an idea of where it sat in the channel. It looks pretty good. You can weld the bead down right there, nice and clean. Not bad. Uh, I'm gonna give you guys a few updates while J-Rock is putting these plates on. He mounted the fuel pressure regulator right here on the frame rail on the driver's side with the Speed Factory Racing fuel pressure regulator bracket. We haven't got the fuel lines yet. We're waiting on injectors. Also put in his mid plate. We got all this stuff powder coated, so that just came in. So we put this on the transmission. I think DP sells them and a few other companies sells those mid plates you can get for your car. They have them for B-Series and K-Series. But uh, my favorite part that we did is the brake lines nice and tucked that has a bulkhead and then connected to inside to the proportion valve this is the front of the car we're still waiting on brakes and rotors for front and back they haven't came in yet and calipers i don't know if he's doing spoon calipers in the front but i think he's doing stock because of the slicks little small things got done not too much i like how you ran the back brake lines yeah one piece right up to the from the caliper all the way to the prop valve. So from the caliper to the prop valve. It's so a long line, but. This is nice. Yeah, got a grommet and everything. This isn't the finished product, but we still have to tidy things up. We're still waiting on the like said, brakes, rotors, calipers. PCI bushings are on the trailing arms. This thing actually looks really, really good. I love the brake lines. Mike at MPH makes them for us, and you can get them through J-Rock. Or New England. J-Rock. Doesn't matter. Not too much progress got done on the car. Like I said, things been really slow. Like I showed you guys, we mounted the proportion valve behind the dash. We ran the brake lines. We stopped it on the front ones to the calipers. Pretty much the brake setup is complete on here. Okay, I'll show you guys one last time. Brake line here to the back of the caliper, all the way through to the front. Same thing on both sides. And then bulkheads in the front. This is so dope. Okay. The brake line. Show them the proportion valve inside too. 
I showed them like before uh, you put yeah. the lines to. I didn't show it to them after. Did you show them mounting? It, it was spacers. mounted, yeah. Well, no, I didn't show them the spacers. It's literally right where the ABS unit sits. It kind of looks like a spider because all the lines are connected to it. Yeah. It's coming along. Slowly but surely it's coming along. It's just all the final details. Everything has to go to powder coat. Everything has to get done. We just put the throttle cable up. Center feed uses RSX Type S throttle cable. This thing is nowhere near complete yet. We're trying to finish the all-wheel drive section before we even get anything on the front done. It's a lot of work. Dirty work. Yeah. What's next, drilling? Well, drilling won't hurt nobody. I don't know how good this bit is. This shit is doing the doggy though. What did you just say to me? I wish somebody would make these to like offer to people like us where, how long has it been already? Uh, someone that it's, works with metal. It's been a while. It's, we've been at this for a long time. This would be so nice. You could sell it for like 300 bucks. I would buy it for 300 kit. bucks to I'd, save I'd, the time. I'd pay for it for you so <laughs> I didn't have to do this. Someone out there works with metal that can probably do this. As long as they need a car. An EG chassis. The contour, I should make templates of these. That's actually a good idea. We don't have time for that. No. <laughs> we got work to do. <laughs> Burnt WD-40 smells pretty good. They should make that in an air freshener. <laughs> I'll put it in my BMW. <laughs> That, huh? Oh, the, got yo, the tip. <laughs> yo, that was on point. <laughs> Alright, we got all the holes drilled. Now, what's left to get drilled is the chassis. Yeah, so this isn't the final hole size because uh, it's close though. So I think we're using 12 holes. So I have to go a step up. But I'm going to leave these. Just like this, put them back up, and what I'm going to do is mark the channel on the car. And the reason that I'm marking that is because we're going to weld a 14, or a 12 actually, it's a 14. But anyways, we're going to weld a 12 nut, and that's not going to sit flush against the channel. So I have to drill a bigger hole than the nut and the channel. So then this can sit flush. And we're going to weld it before we weld this up in there. So these are all the plates. If someone's watching this, can you just make these for us? So make these for the public, not for us, because we don't need them anymore, because the last all-wheel drive car, but... You don't even need to make them fancy, like, to contour the channel. You could literally just I would straight even across. You, you have to sell them raw, too, because people have to weld it. I mean, if you have an inch here and, I don't know, even say two inches there, you could sell them, you know? It doesn't have to be fancy like that. I just did that because, why not? Because we're fancy, right? <laughs> My brother. <laughs> Exactly, he wouldn't want it any other way on his car. It's like, I want them square plates. Take them off, cut them off. Yeah, my, we just came in. My brakes, baby. What'd you get? So I ended up getting some EBC rotors. That's a nice rotor. And some EBC yellow stuff pads. You know, a lot of guys cheap out on this on this stuff right here. This is the most important. How are you gonna have a car that makes a thousand horsepower and then you can't stop? Almost like you at the track when you went off course. <laughs> <laughs> what was he saying in the office yesterday? Fuck the brakes, I don't need to stop. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice but, uh, piece. Nice rotor. You guys know I like the all black stuff. Kinda First like, time using this, so I want to. Kind of like a spoon brake pad. Well, you know me. I want to paint these things black. No way. Yeah. You're gonna paint the spoon spoon pads. You're gonna paint them black. They're not spoon. They're BCs. They look like spoon though. Spoon BCs. <laughs> Yo, bro! <laughs> oh shit, I didn't realize you were right there. Okay. 
Just because I do that to you, I don't mean to do it to my car. <laughs> <laughs> So what are you doing right now, Jack? You gotta drill out bigger holes because the 12s are gonna sit right in there. When that so the 12 right. nut needs to sit up in that hole. Yeah. Gotcha. He's just talking shit to you. This brand new brake pads, bro. How much are these shits like? I think I spent 600 bucks on all of them. Oh, I'm drawing on his order too then. That's why you get stuck in that shit. Yeah. Real quick, what are you doing? Just open it up, because they don't fit right now. So what size bolt is that? This is a 12 mil. So we're gonna open it up for a 12 mil bolt. Yep. Just finished all four. Well, you can do this with a step bit. Now we gotta find some hardware. All right, so we got all the plates on with the hardware. What's the next step from here? Make sure everything sits flush and then bring it back down, weld up the nuts to the plates, put it back up, weld the plates to the chassis. It's a lot and of then, up and down. And then pull it back down to undercoat it. This thing's probably been up in the car like 10 times already today. Now I see why some people take the easy way out. I must say, you did a good job. I ain't done yet. The nuts line up in the chassis. Might have to tweak some a little bit. Other than that, it looks pretty good. This is gonna be like this is gonna be like the final setting for it. The plan is to drop this back down. We just wanted to make sure everything fit in there. Weld the nuts onto these brackets, put everything back up, and then weld these up. Alright, so all the bolt holes lined up. It's time to drop it down. Weld the nuts. Yo, j -Rock, that's like exact size of your nuts. 12 millimeter. Yo, J Rock, what kind of weld are you using? Uh, Miller. Mil Miller 141. Miller 141. This is the best welder ever. It's a little pricey. What was it, like a thousand bucks? It's like a thousand bucks, but for a welder, that's not even bad. Yeah. It's got like auto settings where literally you just put it on auto and it already like picks up on how thick it is somehow. I don't know, but this is like dummy proof. It welds really good. The other one was like hit or miss. Not bad. What you got over there, huh? No, it wouldn't be a meds bill without some spray paint, right? Primer, you can't leave raw metal. No, we don't want no raw dogging over here, right? <laughs> okay, J-Rock, I see the flick of the wrist. <laughs> nice, nice. Ain't bad. Not gonna lie, my brother's too fancy. If that was me, I'd just do that shit up. That's why I like your builds. Don't tell him no. <laughs> He's probably not even gonna see this. Nah, he won't even know. Cause you don't wanna leave raw metal underneath of there. Nah, you don't need to do that. They ain't even cleaning off the welds for him too? Yeah, it's a med's build. It's all about details, right? The details that people don't even see. At that point, we should just power coated it to weld it. Nah, don't tell him that. <laughs> we'll have this thing out tomorrow morning. All right, so these are officially done and primed. And actually, I didn't make these for the car. Okay, okay, J Rock. <laughs> Yo. Yo. What? Yo. Pass out now. Yeah, you're not even gonna lift those right now. <laughs> now, time to weld these up. How big is that bolt that you got there? 12 mil. I was saying, like, how long do you think? Maybe like an inch? Oh, um, nah. This is probably like close to a three, two and a half, somewhere around there. My brother's gonna be so tight when he sees this. 
<laughs> I just walked over here and just noticed, forgot that J-Rock did this earlier. This is just too funny though. If this is my car, I'd be tight. Yeah, Joe, come here real quick. Gotta show you something. We got custom brake pads. Go look at your dad's brake pads over there. Hey, yo. You think he's gonna be tight? <laughs> that gonna be excited. <laughs> So if anybody asks who did it, right? If you guys are siding with me, I got proof that it wasn't me. It was Kev, caught red-handed. Make sure to drop in the comments who did it. J-Rock, put in the comments, J-Rock didn't do it. I ain't do it. J-Rock didn't do it, Kev did it. Blame it all on Kev in the comments. Yo, man. I'm telling right now. <laughs> you should all drive. Yo, what's your official? Nah. Yo, did you see I'm what? I'm telling you what, what is official. What? Nah, I'm not. Well, I'll, I'll snitch. We might as well just snitch, because he's going to see it. The pads are official. Because they don't fit. Huh? No, no, Kev. <laughs> no, I'm not. Kev. Kev. <laughs> Kev. Go look at your car. Go look at your brake, Kev. Yeah, don't blame me. I know. <laughs> we ain't lying. Kev did it to you. Crazy. Why would you yeah. even do that to him, bro? Yeah, I would never On his brand that. new brake pads? Yeah, you see? Look at his pocket. That's the size of his shit, too. I just want to know, when did this take a turn to me being the good guy? How do you eat hot dog? <laughs> It's all about the details, right, J-Rock? Yeah. You know I, 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 I gotta ask something. These brackets, did they come with this kit? Or who did you make them? My boy just made them for you. In house. Where was you at? You know, Sleeping? Crazy the beast. He doesn't even know what they look like underneath that. Above and beyond and about the details. Just right tell him. Boy? You might as well just tell he him. He sat there and cleaned it and primed it. He under primered here. underneath of the bracket for you. That's the shit that people don't My see. My boy getting the presidential over here. But look at the look at the cut that J-Rock did because this curves in right here. How come companies don't send the kit with this? We That's just we said. said that just now. How do you trust, right? You have a thousand horsepower. You have this thing rotating and you're only hold, holding it in with rib nuts. The crazy thing is it's not On even, thin piece it's of metal not even like twisting load. It's not even to that. People think it is. My thing is, you know how heavy that viscous is, right? Yeah. And riv nuts with this thin metal. What happens? You hit a bump, all that weight. Like I don't trust that. People are gonna be dropping viscouses left and right. It took us all day to do this, and I see why people take the easy way out. Hold on. We're not even We're done yet. To turn this into a two-day, uh, two-day two old. <laughs> two <day. laughs> so I see four plates: one, two, three, four, and four people: one, two, three, four. Can we all get a plate? Not me. Gotta go. <laughs> Okay, really? Yeah, yeah, Jay, really? Yeah, Jay right here. All right, I guess I'll have to weld and record. See you guys later. <laughs> you see, how, see how they're doing? Uh, I can't even do this. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. I got to cut it. Uh, real quick before j Rock actually starts welding, make sure there's no carpet in your car. You don't want your carpet to catch on fire while you're welding underneath. Imagine carpet catch on fire. And you wouldn't even know because it's up top. Yeah. So the viscous and the brackets are pretty much tacked up. We are gonna let this down and drop the viscous and then weld up all the plates complete. Officially on its own. Looking here. Yeah, it is on its own. That means officially all wheel drive. All wheel drive ready? All wheel drive ready. And now we get a good straight shot at welding the plates and then undercoat. And then finally assembly of the uh, drive line is done. Thank God. What's left on his car? A couple plumbing things like clutch line. His brakes came in so we could do calipers, front brakes. The big stuff that's left is like radiator, intercooler, piping. We have an exhaust for the car. We got to probably make or fab his downpipe, dump tube, like plumbing, fuel. I think that's it. What DCU did you end up going with? Going with a fuel tech 550. He was gonna go on AEM, but we talked about it that way. We thank didn't have a choice. Yes, yes, thank God. Yeah. Fuel tech the world, J-Rock. You can't beat it, yeah. especially yeah. for the price. If, if you're not in a fuel tech, I'm sorry, but your car's not fast. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just- Unless on a Motec. Or Motec, yeah. Motec, fuel tech. But any AM stuff is like cool, like for street car stuff. But that shit was cool like two a, years ago. It was, but if you're building a high horsepower car like this, like you need the engine management behind it that can actually put it down on the ground, especially all wheel drive. Traction control on fuel tech is amazing. You're not getting that way, AM. We're not trying to steer you guys the wrong way. Every single no. car in this building is on a fuel tech. Yeah, and it's for a reason. It's Correct. proven. It's, it's only been good to us, so. And if you guys that are like budget build or like entry level guys, they sell, was the lowest one's like a 450. 450. You can get the 450, I think it's like K-Pro price. 
The biggest expense you can spend is getting a jumper. We deal with Savvy Wiring. He makes the jumpers. You can buy a jumper from him, get the 450. You're a little bit over the K-Pro, but you have a lot better engine management. Like you can only do but so much on a K-Pro. If it's just a regular street car that you're driving like whatever and you're not beating on it or you don't, you're not out street racing or whatever, then you could be on K-Pro or whatever. Honestly, K-Pro and AEM is the same thing to me. I agree. Like, you don't need to be on a 450 if you got a street car unless you just want to let it all hang out, I guess. Fuel tech is all in one. So you have no computer on your passenger side, less mess, a lot cleaner. And the map sensor is built in the ECU. Yeah. And you get, I think there's like, um, you can practice your reaction time on your tree on the actual touch screen of the fuel tech, which is pretty dope. It's just so much good stuff about it. If you're watching, go get yourself a fuel tech. I think if they come out with a fuel tech coffee maker, I'm going to install it in my car. <laughs> I'm not even lying. And feels like if you're watching this, you know you can sponsor the both of us right here. And that's a wrap for today. Huge shout out to J-Rock. Yo, you killed it today. All this done in one day. Pretty much a whole full day. Crazy just to think like, oh, just those four little plates probably take like a half hour. Like, nah, it took all day. Next up from here is undercoat. Hopefully this video at least helped one of you guys out. Right, that's the main goal behind all this, to help someone out that's doing this build. That's all it takes, and I'm happy. I'm happy with the finished product. I can't wait to see this. When this thing, whole thing's undercoated, it'll look a lot better. But for now, the drive shaft is going to stay out until my brother gets, because you got to remember, he's going to do from the front of the car all the way to back here where he stopped at. That's pretty much it here for today. I'm going to show you guys one full walk around of the car. Maybe if you guys missed something, maybe if I missed something. It's been a few weeks. I was sick. We've been jumping all over, so I will get the full overview pretty much of the car right now for you guys before we end the video that way you guys can see like where we're at and then we'll move forward from here. So I'm gonna start with the interior. Jared got the dash back in. Obviously you guys can't see the brake lines from here, but there it goes. Everything looks nice and clean. Don't know what we're doing with the shift box yet. Yo, Jarek, you killed it in here. It's a good day when uh, the inside of the car isn't all burnt up. <laughs> yeah, it's not on fire. We're gonna put the carpet back in tomorrow. Welding's already done underneath the car. I think he's gonna change the steering wheel, get a red stitch one. We're gonna have to take the cluster out and put the fuel tech bezel in there. Can you see how clean that dash is though? That dash is mint. I don't, that, this sucks is the camera can't really pick it up. This car is mint. This whole car is clean. I think it's just too clean. Poor car. So in the engine bay, we did the black tile wastegate, took that red one off. But this thing just looks great. I don't remember what's the, the last thing you guys seen. It's officially on and throttle body. Final assembly on that. Give it a quick overview. Mounted the speed factory bracket with the welding regulator. This whole thing just looks super, super good. You see the foil line, the feed line? I seen that earlier. j so special. The oil feed line ran away because there's going to be a K-Tune cover to cover all this but he put the line right on top with it to go down most people just like run it over there like i, I don't want the oil to be near the heat and it's tucked and then let me get back here we got the speed factory sandwich plate for the oil pressure and the turbo feed it's coming along though it is coming along it is. but it's, close. it's really close you show them the brake lines on the master how clean that is this is fire it's crazy how clean that is you can i see, don't like any of the brake lines that are on the market like any I'm not gonna say any names, but I don't like their their style of fittings they use. You did a great job on these because they run down together, they're like side by side, and the car's black, so you can barely see them. I don't know if I can point them out to you guys, but they're down there. They're pretty much hidden. That's the main goal of this car to make everything as clean as possible. It's all but about the details. It is That's all the about the detail. That's the name of the build. <laughs> so you guys, I am gonna end this video. Hopefully, we helped one of you guys out. I need you guys to subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment, and remember, Jarek had no parts in writing that. No, I didn't do it. You guys, you guys got my back. Kev did this, not me. Kev did it. Leave it in the comments. See you guys later. Peace out.